not because I was angry with them, not because I hated them, but because I wanted to keep them with me. Heal Satan. Serial killers have captivated our attention for decades, with their heinous crimes leaving a trail of destruction and horror in their wake. In the United States, there have been some of the most notorious and chilling cases of serial killers that have shocked the nation. From the twisted minds of Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer to the cold-blooded killings of the Green River Killer and the infamous BT Killer, these murderers have left a lasting impact on American society. In this video, we'll delve into the dark world of the most notorious U.S. serial killers, examining their motives, methods, and the legacy they left behind. Ten, William Bonin, Connecticut. William Bonin, also known as the Freeway Killer, was active in the Los Angeles area during the late 1970s and early 1980s. Bonin was born on January 8, 1947, in Willimantic, Connecticut, and grew up in the Los Angeles area. Bonin joined the U.S. Air Force in 1965 and served as a military policeman during the Vietnam War. After his honorable discharge from the military in 1969. He worked as a truck driver and delivery man. He was married twice and had two children. Bonin's killing spree began in 1979, and over the course of 21 months, he abducted, raped, and murdered at least 21 young men and boys. His victims ranged in age from 12 to 19 years old and were often hitchhiking or walking alone along freeways. Bonin was arrested in June 1980 after a teenage boy who had been abducted and tortured managed to escape and identify him to the police. He was convicted of 14 counts of murder in 1983 and sentenced to death. He was executed by lethal injection on February 23, 1996. Bonin's crimes were particularly brutal, and he is often cited as one of the most depraved and sadistic serial killers in American history. His case has been the subject of numerous books, documentaries, and films, and has had a lasting impact on the public perception of serial killers and their motivations. 9. Israel Keys. Utah. Israel Keyes was a notorious serial killer who operated between 2001 and 2012. He was born on January 7, 1978, in Cove, Utah, and grew up in a Mormon family. Keyes's family moved frequently when he was a child, and he later claimed that this instability contributed to his lack of empathy and ability to detach emotionally. Keyes was known for his meticulous planning and for avoiding detection by law enforcement. He would bury kill kits in remote locations across the United States, containing weapons, cash, and other items he would use to carry out his murders. Keyes's known victims included Samantha Koenig, an 18-year-old barista he kidnapped in Anchorage, Alaska, in 2012, and Bill and Lorraine Courier, a couple he abducted and killed in Essex, Vermont, in 2011. However, Keyes claimed to have killed at least eight other people, and some experts believe his actual number of victims could be much higher. Keyes was arrested in March 2012 after using Samantha Koenig's debit card to withdraw money from an ATM. He committed suicide in his jail cell on December 2, 2012, while awaiting trial. Keyes's case has been the subject of significant media attention, as well as controversy over the handling of his investigation by law enforcement. His methodical approach to killing and his ability to blend in with society have led some experts to describe him as one of the most sophisticated and dangerous serial killers in modern history. 8. Robert Hansen, Iowa. Robert Hansen, also known as the Butcher Baker, operated in Alaska during the 1970s and early 1980s. He was born on February 15, 1939, in Esterville, Iowa, and grew up in a strict religious household. Hansen was known for hunting and killing young women in and around Anchorage, Alaska, and burying their bodies in the wilderness. He would often lure his victims with promises of modeling jobs or other opportunities and then take them to remote locations where he would assault and murder them. Hansen was arrested in June 1983 after a woman he had abducted managed to escape and identify him to the police. He was convicted of four counts of murder in 1984 and sentenced to 461 years plus life in prison. Hansen's case was notable for the brutality of his crimes as well as for his seemingly normal outward appearance. He was a successful businessman and avid hunter and was well-liked in his community. However, behind closed doors, he was a sadistic killer who took pleasure in the suffering of his victims. Hansen died in prison on August 21, 2014, at the age of 75. 
His case has been the subject of numerous books, documentaries, and films, and has had a lasting impact on the public perception of serial killers and their motivations. 7. Sean Great, Kentucky. Sean Michael Great was convicted of killing at least three women in Ohio between 2016 and 2016. He was born on July 8, 1976, in Kentucky, and grew up in a troubled family. Great was known for targeting vulnerable women, often those who were homeless or struggling with addiction. He would lure them to his home, where he would sexually assault and kill them before disposing of their bodies. Great was arrested on September 13, 2016, after a woman he had abducted managed to escape and call the police. When authorities searched his home, they discovered the remains of two other women, Stacy Hicks and Elizabeth Griffith, who had previously been reported missing. Great was charged with multiple counts of murder, kidnapping, and rape, and in May 2018, he was found guilty on all charges. He was sentenced to death. Great's case was notable for the brutality of his crimes, as well as for the vulnerability of his victims. It has raised questions about the treatment of those who are homeless or struggling with addiction, and the need for greater support and protection for such individuals. 6. Gary Ridgway, Utah. Gary Leon Ridgway, also known as the Green River Killer, was convicted of murdering 49 women in Washington state during the 1980s and 1990s. He was born on February 18, 1949, in Salt Lake City, Utah. Ridgway's victims were primarily young women who worked as prostitutes or in other vulnerable positions. He would often lure them to remote locations, where he would sexually assault and strangle them before disposing of their bodies. Ridgway was arrested in 2001, after advances in DNA technology linked him to several of the murders. He initially denied involvement, but eventually confessed to killing 71 women, although investigators believe the actual number may be higher. In 2003, he pleaded guilty to 48 counts of murder and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Ridgway's case was notable for its scope, as well as for the length of time it took to apprehend him. It was one of the longest and costliest criminal investigations in U.S. history and involved hundreds of detectives and forensic specialists. The case has had a lasting impact on the public perception of serial killers and the use of forensic evidence in criminal investigations. 5. Jeffrey Dahmer, Wisconsin. Jeffrey Dahmer, a serial killer and a sex offender, was known for his gruesome crimes, including the rape, murder, and dismemberment of 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991. He was born on May 21, 1960, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dahmer's victims were primarily young men whom he lured to his home, where he would drug and then kill them. He would often engage in necrophilia and cannibalism with their bodies before dismembering them and disposing of the remains. Dahmer's crimes were discovered in 1991, when one of his intended victims managed to escape and alerted police. When authorities searched Dahmer's home, they discovered evidence of his crimes, including human remains, photographs, and a detailed journal documenting his actions. Dahmer was arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder and sexual assault. He pleaded guilty but was found to be legally sane and was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences in prison. In 1994, he was beaten to death by a fellow inmate. Dahmer's case was notable for its brutality and the extent of his crimes, as well as for the psychological and sociological factors that may have contributed to his behavior. The case has had a lasting impact on public perceptions of serial killers and the need for better understanding and treatment of mental illness. 4. Richard Ramirez, Texas. Richard Ramirez, also known as the Night Stalker, was a serial killer cum rapist who terrorized California in the mid-1980s. He was born on February 29, 1960, in El Paso, Texas. Ramirez's crimes included at least 13 murders, as well as numerous rapes and burglaries. He would often break into homes in the middle of the night, where he would attack and kill his victims, sometimes leaving satanic symbols at the scene of the crime. Ramirez's crimes sparked a media frenzy, and he became one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. He was eventually captured in 1985, after a group of citizens recognized him from a police sketch and apprehended him. Ramirez was convicted of multiple counts of murder, rape, and burglary, and was sentenced to death. He died in prison in 2013 while awaiting execution. The case was notable for its brutality and the extent of Ramirez's crimes, as well as for the fact that he appeared to be motivated by a combination of satanic beliefs and a desire for notoriety. The case has had a lasting impact on public perceptions of serial killers and the role of the media in reporting on their crimes. 3. 
Ted Bundy. Vermont. Ted Bundy was a serial killer, rapist, and necrophile who murdered numerous young women and girls during the 1970s. He was born on November 24, 1946, in Burlington, Vermont. Bundy's crimes involved a pattern of deception and manipulation, in which he would often pose as an authority figure or a person in need of assistance, in order to lure his victims to a secluded location. Once there, he would brutally attack and kill them, often using a variety of weapons. Bundy's crimes spanned several states, and he was able to avoid detection for many years by frequently changing his appearance and using false identities. However, he was eventually captured in 1978 after being pulled over by police and found to be in possession of incriminating evidence. Bundy was convicted of multiple counts of murder and was sentenced to death. He maintained his innocence for many years but eventually confessed to numerous additional murders before his execution in 1989. The case was notable for its extensive media coverage and for the fact that Bundy was able to successfully manipulate those around him, including his victims, law enforcement officials, and the general public. The case has had a lasting impact on public perceptions of serial killers and the need for improved methods of criminal profiling and forensic analysis. 2. Dennis Rader. Kansas. Dennis Rader, also known as the BTK Killer, which stood for Bind, Torture, Kill, murdered 10 people in Kansas between 1974 and 1991. He was born on March 9, 1945, in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Rader's crimes involved a pattern of stalking and torture, in which he would break into the homes of his victims, bind and torture them, and then kill them. He would often taunt law enforcement and the media with letters and other communications, which he signed with the BTK moniker. Rader was able to avoid detection for many years, but he was eventually caught in 2005 after he sent a floppy disk containing metadata to a local news station that led investigators to his home. He later pled guilty to multiple counts of murder and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The case was notable for its lengthy duration and the fact that Rader was able to evade detection for many years, as well as for his meticulous planning and attention to detail. The case has had a lasting impact on public perceptions of serial killers and the use of forensic evidence in criminal investigations. 1. Ed Gein. Wisconsin. Ed Gein was an American murderer and body snatcher who lived in Wisconsin in the mid-20th century. He was born on August 27, 1906, in La Crosse County, Wisconsin. Gein's crimes involved grave robbing, murder, and the creation of macabre artifacts from human remains. He would often dig up recently deceased bodies from local graveyards, and later, he progressed to killing women in order to use their body parts to create his gruesome artwork. Jine was eventually caught in 1957 after the police discovered the remains of one of his victims in his home. A subsequent search of the house revealed a shocking array of human remains and other grotesque items, including a lampshade made from human skin and a belt made from female nipples. Jine was found guilty of murder but was ultimately declared insane and committed to a psychiatric hospital for the rest of his life. His case has had a lasting impact on popular culture, inspiring numerous films and books, and influencing the development of the horror genre. The case was notable for the gruesome and bizarre nature of Jine's crimes, as well as for the psychological factors that may have contributed to his behavior, including his troubled relationship with his mother and a possible diagnosis of schizophrenia. Thank you for joining us on this exploration into the world of notorious U.S. serial killers. While their actions were horrifying, it's important to study and understand these cases in order to prevent such tragedies from happening again. As a society, we must continue to seek justice for the victims and their families and work towards a safer future. If you found this video informative, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, stay safe and take care.